What do you think of when you hear the word missionary? What do missionaries do? How do they live? Are the images in your head nothing more than conjured up memories of flannel graphs? While there may be a thousand shows on TV about singing or dancing, losing as much weight as possible, eating as much as possible, sports, trivia shows, or giant talking heads arguing ideology from an air conditioned studio, there aren't any shows about missionaries. So, what is it that they actually do? We're David and Carrie Swanson, and in July of 2010, We got a chance to find out. We packed our bags and visited missionaries Jenny Swanson, Dorinda Edwards, and Ben Skaggs in a remote corner of Ethiopia called t e k e m t e s h e t After all, if your family won't come see what you're up to, who will? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? The road to Ethiopia starts with a trip to the airport. Even with the advent of air travel, getting to Ethiopia is anything but an easy trip. A flight to Chicago, then across the pond to London. After a short stay in England, we board a British Airways flight to Cairo, Egypt. On day four, an early morning flight to Addis Ababa brings us to the Ethiopian capital. We pass through customs and flip on the video camera. Dave hasn't seen his sister in almost a year, and the greeting is heartfelt. You see her? What? There she is! We made it! And our s u p made it! Oh, look at her! Is that Ben with the camera? Greeting us at the airport with Dave's sister, Jenny, is Ben Skaggs, SIM evangelist and translator. Welcome to Ethiopia! <laughs> at 7,500 feet, Addis Ababa is one of the highest capitals in the world. So, despite this being July in Africa, it is cloudy, rainy, and cool. Addis is the home of the African Union and home to one of the fastest growing economies in Africa. Yet, even with this progress, Addis is a dirty and poor city that apparently hasn't heard of air quality standards, finishing road work, or traffic laws. This is m e s c o Square. This is a little bit of the chaos of m e s c o And there's all the lanes of traffic that you kind of maneuver around. Take in. And it's every man for himself. Every woman for herself. We just try not to hit anything. That's the only rule of Mexico Square. Look at these painted new lines. No, Jenny just... works for SIM, serving in missions, an organization based in Charlotte, North Carolina, with missionaries serving all over the world. Our first stop after landing in Addis is a trip to SIM headquarters. This is where new missionaries like Jenny first live as they attend language school, learn about the culture, and resupply between stints down country. And we have a t e k e m t e s h e t box here where we have storage and all our butane gas bottles and vegetable oil for some reason. But we store all our stuff here until we can take it down and back. What does butane bat- gas do?、Uh, for me, it runs my fridge and stove.、Um, It can run a lot of things, but that's what my house is set up to do. But we also use it for the clinic refrigerator as well. And then this is our t e k e m t e s h e t mailbox. So when I get mail from family and supporters, it goes here. And then、uh, we pick it up from the mailroom. It's empty. Nobody sent you anything. That's because I picked it up already. <laughs> we'll load up with supplies here before starting our drive to t e k e m t e s h e t We're loading the land cruiser for the trip to t e k e m t e s h e t There's Two butane、uh, canisters in there right now, and then there's、uh, medicines and things like that. And now we're just kind of, there's a whole bunch of stuff that has to go, and somehow we're going to get it all in there. 
And her luggage over there is in the back. Say hi. Can you help me carry this? It's too heavy. While at SIM headquarters, Jenny gives us a briefing on the layout of the country. This is our map of Ethiopia, and for the most part, it's correct. Addis is here in the center. And then if you drive southwest, halfway to TI is Jimma. That's about a five and a half hour drive, and it's paved roads all the way. And then if you keep going southwest to where the road splits, and then we turn off to Tekemtesha. Just outside SIM headquarters, we meet a woman dear to Jenny's heart. This is Wabedi, a beggar whom Jenny befriended when she first started language school. Every day, on her way to class, Jenny would bring Wabedi some tea and sit and talk with her. A relationship was built, one conversation, one cup of tea at a time. <laughs> So who are these people who give up everything to work in Ethiopia? We got a chance to sit down with them and hear their story about how God called them here. My name is Jenny Swanson and I'm a missionary nurse midwife. My name is Dorinda Edwards and I'm a nurse midwife. My name is Ben. My occupation is with Jesus out trying to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. I had um, an aunt and uncle that were missionaries in Ecuador and um, their life was just really interesting to me, the stories that would come back. I used to have these dreams as a child and they weren't always the, the nicest of dreams, They're often nightmares with the witch doctors and the snakes chasing after me, but I just knew that something was calling me to Africa. We had missionaries from SIM who were serving in uh, West Africa and they had stayed in our home for a few days on furlough. And then when I was eight, um, I was at a missions conference and they, at the end of it, said, okay, those who God's challenging to be a missionary, to stand up and we're going to pray for you. And I just knew that that was my real call, that God was calling me to be a missionary. We grew up in a small village in northern Illinois, and there was a pastor from Australia who was studying in Chicago. And God greatly used in my life. I had met one of our missions directors who introduced me to Bark and Carling Fanestock, who were missionaries with SIM in Ethiopia, and they had been here about 30 years, and the last place they had served was two years in Tekemtishet. As far as mission work is concerned, I joined the Peace Corps in 1978, and God took me to Africa. And this missions director, he said, have you met these folks yet? They're really great, they're missionaries, and um, I know you're interested in missions. I'd actually never heard of SIM, even with my missions background. It's just not huge in Australia. So a friend of mine, her parents had been missionaries actually in Ethiopia, not that that had any influence on me coming out here. And she was like nine months pregnant with her second child. She's like, come along to this breakfast thing, a, a young adult thing that SIM used to do once a month. He uh, introduced us and I had about a 10 minute conversation with Carlene and she was talking about Tekemta Shet and I was speaking about my heart for uh, places that um, really had nothing is where my heart is, um, just kind of the the lowest of the low, and um, just her, you know, the people of Tekemta Shet, that's what she described. Um, and with the maternal child health issues here, um, Tekemta Shet really came into focus as a place where the Lord had been preparing me to go for a long time. Actually, when we were in Chad, there was someone who walked down from the north, and one of my Chadian buddies, Paul Langal, came up to me excitedly one day, and he said, there's this guy who came from the north, he and his entire tribe have never heard of Christ. Why don't you sit down and talk to him? So I went along and it was the most boring thing out. I'm like, God, I'm not going to be a missionary. And just different things happened. And actually it was later that week, God just said, this is the mission organization. I just knew, it's hard to explain, but it was just this deep down piece. And I just knew this was the mission organization I had to check out. So we sat down in the ditch in front of our house there in Chad and talked with this guy over a number of days and... And he listened and believed in Christ. And one of the things he said really impacted Galindas in my life, and that was, he said, if this is the best news on the planet, then why haven't, not only I've never heard about it, but my entire tribe have never even heard his name. So God used that to get us going with unreached people groups. Before we head south, we were able to get lunch at an authentic Habasha restaurant. 
so come with me. I'm such a dreamer. <laughs> We're going to an uh, Ethiopian restaurant. It's really decked out and I can never remember the name of it. You want to get this all together, people? Yeah. Uh, we're not gonna order kippo, that's the raw beef. But everything else looks really yummy. Joining us for lunch are Tsion, a met and girl from Tekemp Duchette, and Renee Cole, the SIM personnel director for Ethiopia. It's best if you two, because you're just new, mm -hmm. you might have problems with your stomach, so just try to stay away from that. Ethiopian food is served on a flatbread called injera. Various dishes called wat are prepared and served on the injera bread. Uh, we have um, <laughs> chips. So I can hold meat. it like this? Mm -hmm. Yep, and then okay. you can break off vegetables or bayonet, which is fasting food, or dairy free meat food, shiro, which is. After the meal, we enjoy some of the best coffee in the world. After lunch, it's time to start our trek south.